But first, this podcast is supported by $100 donators on Patreon who like to promote Magical Heroines, a webcomic on tapas.com. Whether you love or hate anime, it's about a middle schooler forced to join a magical girl gang and beat the shit out of people because she was told to. It's Magical Heroines. Read it on the links below at tapas.com. Our next donator is by Idealix with their own webcomic, Loose Cannon. It's about a young bounty hunter girl in the Old West and ends up on the wrong side of the law. Links to that below on Webtoon. And the next sponsor is Red Herring Cap, an alt indie band from the Bronx, New York. Follow their band camp and YouTube in the links below. It's the ah. oh sorry Rebel Taxi Pizza Party podcast, and we have a special guest back at it again. It's Maxwell Adams. Who are you? Hi, I'm Maxwell Adams. What do you do? I don't know you. Um, I sit at home with my dog and I draw pictures, and uh, I've been growing tomatoes. Oh, sweet, just like Big O. But what, what did you do? What's, to, what did what's you your do? favorite? To, what's the your favorite tomato that you've grown? That's a stupid question. Um, I got one heirloom tomato this year, and I was excited. It's not a stupid question. They're fancy Ooh. tomatoes. They're, oh man, oh. You know, they're not like red. Why are they? Not... Why are they called heirloom tomatoes? Okay, now that's a stupid. You question. think he's a scientist? I don't know. <laughs> I, well, I, if he's growing like tomatoes, I, I, if he's growing tomatoes, I feel like you know you'd know like what types of tomatoes there are like. I only know like app different apple types. I didn't know there were even different tomato types. Cherry tomatoes. You know? Damn yeah. it! They're they're good snacks. The cherry tomatoes. tomatoes. They're good. Yeah. Grape tomatoes. Grape tomatoes. No, tomatoes I don't know anything candy. about that. Have you all ever heard of the forbidden tomato? Tomato. What was that? Yeah, exactly. That's what I, I thought. They're gonna reboot the killer tomatoes because oh. I've been waiting for that for a while. No, are they gonna... just gonna reboot? No, are they just going to reboot tomatoes in general? There was a rumor back, like, maybe like a decade ago that the Ask the Ninja guy, that YouTuber, was going to be directing a re reboot sequel. Oh, hell yeah. And then nothing happened of it. Damn. <laughs> His career ended, but Maxwell, what 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 did you, okay, what's your thingy, what's, you got, you, you what, got, what you do got people this. know you for? What do people know me for? Probably The Grim Adventures of Billy and Mandy, which is an old cartoon from Cartoon Network. Yeah. A very good one. Yeah, yeah. it feels like yeah. Might I add? Like, I finally got around to rewatching it after like twenty years, and it's like, huh? Yeah, what's the deal with the first season versus the last season? What's that about? It has been twenty years now, strangely enough. Uh, uh, well, there was oh. like, what eight eight years in between the first season and the last season. Well, just how it that. transitioned over time, like how it went less <laughs> spooky, you know? Um, I, I was, uh, talking to somebody about this the other day, but, uh, a lot of it was just the need to survive. Uh, hmm. so like our, our first season, like we started off, uh, where we won the 12 half hours on the big pick weekend. Yeah. And then that was immediately busted down to six half hours. And then we just sort of got these anemic pickups for a while after that, where we get like six half hours and then another six half hours and then nine half hours. So and Billy and Mandy was I on the verge of like we were... canceling? Yeah, yeah. So I just felt like we were always on the edge. So if anything like got a laugh, I was like, "That's staying in." Mm. Uh, so it was just sort of, uh, I guess, Darwinian comedy. Wow, <laughs> it's it surprising. It, it works. Like it kind of. I feel like it. It's reflected in the show a fair bit. Kind of like. Yeah, yeah sort of and, and the rest comedy. of it was, uh, I think, just me learning how to run a show and how to get what I wanted on the screen because the first season i you know it's uh it's hard for me to watch even to this day just because <laughs> like i didn't know what i was doing i was 23 years old and trying to you know run a crew of like 40 people and, oh man uh oh, you you, you, know, things, you were things, a showrunner <laughs> at 23 uh yeah yeah it was that's when uh that's when i started Fuck. that's crazy i don't no, know it seems like really cool. Every other like showrunner ends up being like twenty six, like um, practically everyone, and you beat them by three years. Nice, yeah, good work. 
I did yeah. not realize there was actually like a science to it where like you have to be like 26 yeah, and that's you, when it comes to you. If you don't do it by yeah. then, just just give up. It's over. It's like it's like the presidency. Oh, you man. have to be a certain age in order to run. Yeah. Unless they bring or, back or a Jedi. I was uh, I was a little too young, but still. Yeah. I'm actually kind of curious about who's the youngest showrunner now. Um, Maybe the guy hmm. from Undergrads, possibly MTV's Undergrads. I think. I'm, I'm yeah. Um, somebody in the and comments, no, just tell us. At Maxwell, you're supposed to be answering questions. Answer that one. <laughs> yeah. You don't <laughs> know everybody. <laughs> Yeah, yes. I have a couple of questions for uh, Maxwell. Question number one: Why did my dad leave me? Huh? Oh, man. <laughs> Can you answer uh, that one? Probably the smell. What oh, the fuck? <laughs> Damn! Oh. Brutal. Right for the jugular. Awesome. This is gonna be a fun podcast. <laughs> this is gonna be great. Yeah. But yeah. Um... Well, I pointed out in the in the video for Billy and Mandy, like, what's the deal with Irwin? Did you just not have an idea what he was what he was gonna be like? Because early on, he he seemed to have hated Billy. Um, I think he was like he was always kind of the guy that was gonna get like crapped on by life. Uh, <laughs> oh. But yeah, there's there's an, that episode where like Billy keeps calling him on the phone. Uh, and you know he seems creeped out by it. I, in my mind, he was never really creeped out by Billy, but I guess he does come across that way in the early seasons. Yeah, yeah really... he he like he was like I remember the way the scene was set up. Like Billy leaves a message, and like Erwin is just like hurled, um, huddled up against a wall in fear. Like, <laughs> but... so um, I googled, and apparently, the youngest showrunner is Josh Schwartz, who created The OC in 2003 at age 26. So I think you technically that beat don't... him. You might be the youngest. That's uh, no, nobody counts uh, cartoons. I don't think it shows. Oh, man. Uh, yeah. yeah, I'm pretty sure uh, Alex Hirsch was also 23 when he started uh, Gravity Falls. Damn. Oh, that... <laughs> I'm fucking up my life. I ain't done nothing. I'm like, I don't know what age I am. I'm 27, 28. I don't know. I, I stopped. Well, yeah, I don't I even know your own that, age. So. Yeah, it's like that. Once blink... you hit 30 in animation, it's over. So. Yeah, just give up. <laughs> it's like Blink 182. I don't know my own age. That's how the song goes. Wake me up when September ends, Wake isn't me up it? When you find out what my age is. Yeah. Good old. Some. I don't even, I don't even think song. I got that one right. Yeah. Yeah. All right. But uh, other things like, what, what would you say? Was the uh, art design change? Was that just you uh, getting better at drawing everyone and simplifying them and making it easier to draw? Uh, the, it was some of that and some of just again learning learning how to teach the overseas studio what I mm. wanted. Uh, the the first season or maybe two seasons. Uh, actually, they did this through the whole series. It was just me adapting, but uh, rather than sort of using the model pack, they would just trace the storyboards. Hmm. That's kind cool. of so, I feel like now. Yeah. In order to sort of rein that in, uh, I ended up sort of doing more uh, control on my end before it got to overseas. <laughs> yeah. I think that was kind of the change. I like how Hostel Gatto turned out in Underfist because he, he was a lot more square and simplified in the in the later Billy and Mandy, but Underfist is like the right balance of his original and new design. Yeah, I like that one too. He was He was... I definitely a little too lumpy in the early version for my taste yeah yeah That's i i actually have been thinking a lot about under fist recently and i'm really bummed out that they didn't pick it up because it's like a honestly one of my favorite halloween specials like ever it would have been a lot of fun i think i would i think i could be happy just making halloween specials for the rest of my life if somebody was willing to pay me to do that. <laughs> oh, oh yeah because we we okay. yeah because me and izzy we saw your uh the scooby uh the new scooby-doo uh TV movie, a uh, Happy Halloween Scooby Doo, was it? Yeah, yeah, like I, I refused to give up on Halloween, like because I just didn't feel like it happened this year. So I've been doing nothing but watching Halloween specials now. Yes, <laughs> trying to recapture that. I say we very moment. I say we say fuck Christmas and just have Halloween too. Yeah, Calbar's Revenge. That's the dream. But but it's this new Halloween. this new Scooby Doo movie, like it is like for anyone watching it or whatever, it is blatantly Scoop. It, it it's blatantly Billy and Mandy. Like it feels like. Scooby Doo in the Billy and Mandy universe in a way because it's I agree with that. Up, you 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 recycled the same characters from Halloween Bash, not I mean jacked up Halloween. You're really selling it here, man. Good job. It's, Proud of you. No, I'm serious. <laughs> Izzy, back me up. It's true. Uh, I mean, they're not the same. I Close did come enough. to. I ha I had sort of a 
like a crisis early on with this because like I was trying to figure out what the monster was going to be. Yeah. And everything I thought of, I was like, well, I've, I've either done that in Billy and Mandy or Scooby-Doo's already done it. And I was like, man, every single monster is basically already either a Halloween monster or a Scooby-Doo monster or both. <laughs> Well, I mean, like, so, they have a new movie every year. Yeah, so eventually <laughs> I just looped back around, and I was like, well, I could do pumpkins, and I've done it before, and then I was like, and I have the scarecrow, and I could put the jack-o'-lantern yeah. on him, and I was like, ah, I'm just going to do it. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah, my roommate's a big comic book fan, and so, like, he was pretty shocked that the scarecrow had appeared in it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I was, when too. We... I, I'm not used to, I mean, it makes sense. New Scooby-Doo movies and stuff. Batman's been part of the Scooby-Doo franchise for a while, but yeah. I just kind of forget. It was nice. Yeah, it's yeah. I'm glad I got him in there. I felt like I needed a recognizable villain for that part. Yeah, I, I when, was I was kind of theorizing like, was this like an unused Billy and Mandy script or something? <laughs> uh, no, what? it was actually it was in a way. I mean, it was inspired by a lot of things, but it was sort of my like consolation Max, prize, road. I guess, for, for yeah, not, not being able to do Dead Meat. I finally got my road movie anyway. Oh, man. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Speaking of Dead Meat, I'm so sorry that happened to you. I backed that Kickstarter myself. I was super excited well, thank for you. it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, me too. Yeah. Me too. Yeah. I, did, I, don't, I don't know if I got a refund or not. I don't want a refund. I just want to support oh, thanks. You. Yeah, I haven't even sent them out yet because yeah. I've been unemployed all year. <laughs> oh. Aww. Christ, I'm so, sorry, yeah, dude. Scoot, scoot. Yeah. Well, thank you. Uh, yeah, so with animation, just everything takes forever, so uh, Happy Halloween Scooby-Doo was actually done in January, but mm. just been hanging out since yeah. then. Yeah. Do, are you okay with discussing that, that... dead meat? What was that? Are you okay with discussing dead meat? Sure. Yeah. Okay. Before, before that, I just want to say it must feel really fucking weird, like having to uh make a holiday related uh like episode of animation and then you get done in january and you're like well I just don't feel it <laughs> like that's the weird thing is it's always uh halloween ends and then like a month later someone's like hey you want to do a halloween special like, mm, yeah, okay <laughs> get it done ahead of time <laughs> yeah it's so weird yeah animation is well just production in general since it always has to be done in advance must feel so weird doing holiday stuff yeah everything's all sort of mashed together so i guess it i guess you stop thinking about it as like a holiday thing time has no meaning anymore yeah. i mean if yeah, i wanted halloween not. to be expend like expanded for a couple of months extra out of the year that's kind of nice you know of all the holidays mm -hmm. it could have been true mm -hmm. true true yeah explain like uh briefly what dead meat was gonna be uh dead meat was a live action looking post apocalyptic puppet action movie mhm mm so perfect yeah cuz uh the first time we ha i had you on on the as an interview was back in 2013 and when you kickstarted it and yeah you you want to bring up the bad news me uh sure yeah, i don't know what yeah <laughs> yeah i uh i Pit. ran into a bunch of problems uh uh the big one being uh, i had been using you know, I'd been working on it for like eight years, so I'd been doing uh, all the effects stuff first. So just by myself and with a couple other people, I'd been doing a lot of puppets and miniatures and, and cars and whatever. Uh, and it turns out you can't mix uh, by SAG rules. You can't set Screen Actors Guild. You can't mix uh, uh, non SAG actors with SAG actors. And unfortunately, since my puppeteers were not SAG actors and the voice actors that I had used to sell Dead Meat on Kickstarter were all SAG actors, then I either had to ditch one or the other, and either way, like, I was left with just this massive amount of footage that I could never show anyone. <laughs> oh, man. So by this point, like, I had just, you know, I felt like I'd been beating my head against the wall for, like, seven years, and it was driving me nuts. So I decided to pull the plug and deal with the consequences. Damn. The the bureaucracy of Hollywood is so infuriating. Just yeah, yeah. I will definitely never do anything like that again. <laughs> oh man. No, oh, that sucks. Uh, I mean, it makes sense I, for sure. <laughs> yeah. Oh god, I'm I'm really sorry that that happened. It it, it, it I I don't even want to get into it for your sake, but it's just that sucks <laughs> hard. It was it oh, was a you. sad day when you announced it. Like I was legitimately pretty like. Not not like depressed where I was like like but I was uh, it, it hit me hard because I was excited for it you know yeah me too like uh, 
I'll, I, I'm sure at some point I can cobble together some of what I've got and at least some of the people that worked on it will have something to show. <laughs> Release an unfinished yeah. cut, maybe, or what? Yeah. Something. Yeah. I, I, uh, at the, at the very least, there's a lot of people ha um, supporting you regardless, which makes me happy because there's always a lot of really shitty people who think very insularly. So, like, cause at least as far as I've seen, everybody's yeah, no, been... I, I, I'm really lucky where I've, I've always had, like, a really good understanding fan base. Like, uh, I just felt like everything was taking so long on Dead Meat, and I think I only maybe ever had, like, one or two people call and... Or not call, but write and complain about it. <laughs> I mean, yeah. it, it's There's... pretty much a Kickstarter tradition for them not to be released on time. And... <laughs> I mean, you actually True. worked on it. You didn't like take the money and run like all these other weird Kickstarters that were possibly scams. I uh, I actually have been waiting for this like art book that's like how to draw action that I backed like I think when I started college in like 2014, and it it barely gets updates, and I'm like, yeah. Worst I feel like there was there were a couple of things I backed during the Dead Meat Kickstarter that I'm either still waiting on or just happened. No, oh. I, I think the most nerve wracking was I backed the um, scary godmother doll, and uh, and I moved like four times since I backed it, and the entire time I was always freaking out like it's going to get sent to the wrong place, <laughs> and I kept like messaging uh, I think her name's Jill like be like hey uh, just so you know here's my new address <laughs> just trying to like make sure it arrives and I I did eventually get it. Yay! All right. Yeah. I I still think one of the best Kickstarters or it was a GoFundMe was when the guy was like I want to have a potato salad party and he got fifty thousand dollars for it. What the fuck? And I'm just like, God, that's... Salad. Yeah, who doesn't like potato salad? I, I mean, I, I don't. It's all but... right. I don't know. I haven't tried it in forever. I'd rather have, like, regular mashed potatoes, like, at that point. I have never met a potato I didn't like. <laughs> I, I just imagine you sitting at, like, a regular Italian restaurant table with, like, the checkered, like, tablecloth and, like, next sitting next to you is a potato and you go, come here often. <laughs> Okay, so to go back, not to waste uh, Maxwell's time, I do have a couple of questions. I could talk about potatoes all day. I mean, yeah, me too. I'm with yeah, them. I, mean, I know less about potatoes than I do about tomatoes. So. They're the perfect food. You can do anything you want to them, and they always come out perfect. I mean, you could fuck up a potato, but I'm just saying, like, it's it's one of those things where you could serve it in so many different ways. It's so versatile. Speaking of, like, not real, like, vegetables, did you know corn's not real and it's, like, actually just, like, a, a man-made, like, vegetable? It's made of foam latex. Yeah, I think. You can't, di you can't digest it. So yeah, you can't digest it because we haven't adapted to digesting it. However, the, uh, my favorite type of corn, aside from popped, is the, like, colored corn. Does anyone have a Billy and Mandy question? I have uh, one for Pan, we're talking about corn. Fuck yeah. off. Did okay. you guys Shut see... Uh, <laughs> what's that movie? Uh, Interstellar? Yeah, what they're about... Planning, what? They're planning all the corn to save the human race. That, oh that's where God. I read about it. it was, uh, I guess everybody would just like poop themselves to death because oh, nobody no. could handle all that corn. Yeah. That's all they had. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, okay. now, now I need to see this. this corn doesn't <laughs> digest. Not to waste time, let's ask a couple of questions. So I have a couple of Scooby-Doo ones for the <laughs> Happy Halloween. Sorry, it's not Ma Billy and Mandy focused. Either or is can. good. Yeah, and... it's not freaking corn. Shut up, corn's cool. Anyway, yeah. go on. Uh, I think we, we can talk about Billy and Mandy. We can talk about Scooby-Doo. We can talk about Banicula. We can talk about oh, yeah, fish hooks. you worked on Banicula. We can talk about corn. <laughs> we can talk about cow and chicken. We can talk about beans. Mm, what about beans? Fruit. Peppers? No, no. Hey, I you know a little bit about peppers. You know, you know what we should discuss is that that unmade Blues Brothers cartoon you worked on. I'm Dan Aykroyd. Since childhood, I have been fascinated with the invisible world, a world which can help us get through life if we know how to draw upon its power, a world serving positive projections, wherein you use your own personal, mental, and spiritual abilities to believe. What's going on with you? What are you talking about? You, you sound insane. Everybody, Prue here. Now it's the grim adventures of Billy and Mandy. Then it's Ed, Ed, and Eddie. This is Cartoon Network. Oh yeah, we can talk about that too. Yeah, explain that. 
Ooh, <laughs> yeah, this sounds I juicy. Can explain it. <laughs> what? Well, what? What? How far along did you work on it until it got like shit canned? Uh, from pretty much the very beginning, there I was like sitting at a desk at Film Roman, which is the place that makes The Simpsons. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's where I that's where I got my internship. So this would be like my first real job. And they were like, "Hey, so we're gonna put you on a show. Do you want to go on to King of the Hill?" Uh, which at that point, that hadn't really started yet either. Like everybody, uh, all the designs had like these giant Beavis and Butthead heads. <laughs> <laughs> So oh my like, God. Do you want to oh, work man. on this or do you want to work on this Blues Brothers cartoon? And the Blues Brothers cartoon was kind of all like Fleischer esque, rubber hosey hmm. looking thing. And I was like, Blues Brothers, that's the one that's going to go. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. Oops. So, yeah, I, I went on that show and like knowing, knowing what I know now, like it was obviously going to collapse from day one. <laughs> oh, what? So uh, just because like the, you know, we were getting like these 90 page scripts. And everyone was oh. like, wow, that's a lot of script. Uh, just everybody was kind of overloaded. So they kept uh, shutting down the show. And we'd get like this this like paid week off every now and then while they retooled things. And then we'd come back. And I was like, this is great. I love working in animation. <laughs> 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 and then uh, one day they were like, everybody from uh, the Blues Brothers crew, please come to the main conference room. Oh, no. And we walked in. And there's just this woman and these two guys in sunglasses. And they're like, yep, you're all gone at 3 o'clock. Uh, we'll check your bags on the way out. Damn. <laughs> Yeah, were those two guys in sunglasses, Dan Aykroyd and <laughs> the other guy? I forget. Yes. Wow. Oh, shit. Wow. Wow. Those, uh, those yeah, bastards. Was, um, Dan. Dan, Dan Arkanoid. Uh, Peter Aykroyd actually approved uh, my drawings. It was Yay. a really kind of weird, top-heavy show where I would, I did design, so I just uh, would do like a character design, give it to my boss, he would sign off on it, and then they would fax it to somewhere and then i would just get the i would get it back to me with all these notes and they would all be signed by like you know peter Aykroyd and judy belushi <laughs> yeah there's actually a couple of screenshots uh let me send you one because it's like is this did you draw this hang on uh when you were when you were leaving the office that day they were like get out of here dan Aykroyd was like listen i know it's been a tough time for you all i have some uh crystal skull vodka here um it cleans it, it's very nice very clean you can drink it any time, uh, and this is my parting gift to you. That is the show. Yeah. yeah. I like that's, that that's... art on that. That would have been fun. Yeah, there's yeah, more screenshots was, uh, here. The head designer, or the art director, was Mike Diedrich, who uh, eventually went on to do boards for Billy and Mandy. Ooh, yeah, yeah. Nice. Very nice. Mm -hmm. These are clean as hell, yeah. Yeah. Did it actually so, last 10 episodes? I, I assumed it, it didn't last at really... all. I don't uh, think they, they actually pulled the plug on it as the first footage was coming back. I don't know if that footage looked terrible or if anybody even saw that footage. I just know that like the week it was coming back, they were like, nope, it's done. Oh, man. Okay, this, oh the lost it, media. That's why. Because it, it on this wiki that Pan posted said there was 10 episodes. Like, what? Nah. I think it really like makes one interstitial that had the NBC Peacock in it. Hmm. Really makes you wonder what what was in that footage that made them cancel it. Yeah, I think that it was done before the footage came back. That happened. Yeah. yeah, it was. I just like I I just like to imagine like they show the uh the guys and they're like, so what do you think? No, <laughs> no, no, it's done. Nah, this just would have been fun. I'm kind of like just the art style. Alone. It ain't no Blues Brothers two thousand. No. So, uh, can I ask that Scooby-Doo question now? Oh, yeah, that's right. We were going to ask questions. Okay, so um, what I'm at, so I watched it, enjoyed it, and the questions I wanted to ask was, uh, what was any mandates that Warner Brothers had? Like, were you able to choose voice actors, or did they already kind of like, hey, here's the main cast, you got to use these, these were in Be Cool Scooby-Doo, these are the current? Um, so, like, were you able to, like, play around with some of the casting at all? Uh, it's I mean, I pretty much had carte blanche to do whatever I wanted to do, minus uh, it had to be the Halloweeniest Halloween special I could make it. Uh, the sheriff had to be the villain, and <laughs> Elvira was in it. Yeah, was there the, was there were there any other like weird stipulations with like the Scooby cast, or were they literally just like do whatever you want with them? 
Uh, and in, as far as they went, like I, I wanted to keep them because they've been around forever. I don't know if Warner Brothers would have been on board with me trying to change a main cast member or not, but I didn't even think to try. Um, oh. And yeah, as far as the other parts go, uh, like Elvira, I guess, was in the previous uh, DVD, so she sort of carried over. But uh, yeah, the rest of it, like Bill Nye, that was just sort of my idea. And... <laughs> That's fine. Yeah. What's the what, what's the weirdest like note back you got? Because I'm assuming you probably got some executive notes, be like change this or something. I really didn't get a lot. Let me think. Or was there anything mm. that you just had to cut out? I mean, the the it was like a really I don't want to say rushed, but it was a really fast production. Mm -hmm. Like it just everything happened. <laughs> it felt yeah. like at the same time. Uh, was it like a less than a year, a year about? It was less than a year. I think, like, I'll never really know, but I think what happened was they may have had another script or something that they'd been working on before, because when they originally asked me to do it, they were like, hey, do you want to do uh, a 50th anniversary Halloween Scooby-Doo special? And I was like, yeah, I do. <laughs> and then, like, within about a week, I was like, wait, we're not going to make that date at all. <laughs> oh. So... Well, it um, came out in October, twenty twenty. Oh well, yeah, but it but it no, was not the uh, anniversary. It was, done, it was done in January of this year, and I think it was supposed to be done last year for for October of last year. Yeah, close uh, enough. Okay. Um. So your interpretations of the Scooby Gang they reminded me a lot of the Be Cool Scooby Doo version, specifically Daphne. Do they have? Did that have any influence on you, or like what what brought you to this version that you came to? Um, I just, I did like a whole bunch of binge watching Scooby-Doo be before I wrote it. So just tons and tons of, uh, videos and, uh, I watched some Be Cool Scooby-Doo. I watched all of Mystery Inc. And then I was like, well, there really is no canon. So what if I just like, assume, it. assume it's all true? <laughs> <laughs> so I kind of just cherry picked the stuff I liked and like Daphne was when I started coming up with the story, she was like the one person that I wasn't really all that excited about. Cause I was just like, what do I do with Daphne? And uh, like, once I watched the be cool Scooby-Doo, I was like, that's a fun version of Daphne. So hmm. I, I kind of have my own take on why she's that way. I don't know why they did it, but uh, can we hear yours? I like her. I think she's oh, fun. Hmm. Uh, no, I mean, I, I guess it's just more that uh, she's, she's on the spectrum kind of like, she's not just a, uh, she's not just, you know, a damsel in distress or someone who can kick ass. Uh, but she's kind of all of that. <laughs> yeah. 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 Cause, cause I feel like no one really knows what to do with Daphne most of the time, because like, again, I feel like she has the most changes out of the core cast. Cause, cause there was like damsel in distress and then the live action movie is kind of put into action girl version of Daphne. And that felt like that was kind of her place for a bit. And now we got this goofy Daphne which is very enjoyable. I agree with you. It's it's it's, it's uh, not what you expect for the pretty girl, I guess. Yeah, I think I think that's what I like about it. Is it just mixes it up a little bit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, um, I do like the subject of uh, notes from the um, executives trademark because like. I own this Batman animated art book, and it has like a just a whole section dedicated to all the weird sort of like notes they would get like how batman can't punch somebody in the stomach but is this, if he elbows or knees the the bruce tim drawing of like batman going out the window choking the joker with the knife <laughs> yes and, uh... that one exactly just the biggest fuck you to censors ever yeah. uh what's I, like some of the every show has one of those that they do at some point <laughs> did billy and mandy have one i'm sure we did because um uh... the reason why i asked that question is because we uh inter we talked to we were we had a convention at Momocon, and we were booth next to the guy who wrote the uh, Flintstone comics, the the gritty Mark reboot Russell. ones. Yeah, and like he was telling us about how like uh, the like their execs was like, you can't have a Fred Flintstone comic without him seeing Yabba Dabba Do, and then he made it into um, his like uh, PTSD like calm down phrase, <laughs> and they never asked him to change anything ever again. Like, you're not, no no, they're just like you're done. <laughs> So I was kind of hoping there was something like that. <laughs> Scooby Doo. Oh, man. Like no, you can't I think have the really. Knuckles. The only stuff uh, we got 
any notes on were, were like stuff from the like the celebrity representations to like Elvira's manager and Bill Nye's manager stuff like that. Oh, I could imagine. I could imagine there's a lot of uh, bureaucracy there too. It actually wasn't so bad. It was just sort of uh, like brand stuff. Like Elvira has her belt and her ring, and we, they just wanted to make sure her ring was on the left hand instead of the right hand or wherever we had oh, it. Yeah, yeah. So specific. Yeah. Right. It's important. You gotta you gotta keep that branding. You won't recognize it without the ring. Yeah. True, I guess. <laughs> well, I got an evil concarnate question. Yeah, what's Ooh. what's uh what was with the gradient heavy art style change? Because that looks pretty hard to do in T V animation. I feel like a lot of shows do it. It it came out in retrospect heavier than I wanted it to. Like I feel like I I needed to knock like another ten or fifteen percent off the shadows, but <laughs> Yeah. Because no other uh, TV cartoon seems to do this, this all this gradient. It's like this is weird. It's just, this doesn't look like anything else. So I don't know. Yeah, that was uh, we were. I think we were trying some new stuff with our last couple episodes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, when you're on the verge, it's might as well throw everything at it, right? Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. I'm trying to think so of that's what. Gotta be kind of scary to think about it because like it seems like every show is on the cutting room like cut like ready to be cut except for like the simpsons <laughs> well by, uh, by the time we got to the point where we were doing the kind of the revamp on evil concarne billy and maddie was in a good spot by then like we mm -hmm. knew evil concarne was on the way out oh, and man. it probably didn't get as much love even then as it could have yeah like, i remember it, really liking evil concarne it's just been so long since i've seen it because i think i was like five maybe i feel God, like it's I'm hard old. to find now i'm not even sure where you would actually i mean youtube at least has like up for buy if you <laughs> that's all i know i think oh really uh, okay Car yeah. cartoon network's always been notoriously terrible at like home distribution providing their shows for you yeah oh my gosh <laughs> uh, somebody sent me the other day um a thing on ebay for the billy and mandy season one dvd which is the only dvd that they made and I guess it's so rare now that it's worth 200 bucks. <laughs> what the f I got it. I'm yeah, looking for that. And then I was when like, I, was... I wonder if I have those in my closet. And I went and I looked and it's all just comic books. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I, I have the, uh, I bought the Kids Next Door DVD. Bucks candy kick. And I'm like, where can I find this damn show? They're not airing it. Oh, wait, the... DVDs. oh wait, the audio cut out. What'd you say? I was just, I'm just expressing my frustration because I was in a big K&D kick and I, the cheapest I could find was like 40 bucks for a oh. DVD back in the day. Yeah. Um, it's what? just Cartoon Network. Get I mean, on I, this shit. I get my footage my, from iTunes. My least I'm favorite. hoping now that uh, HBO has finally, I think, HBO Max. Out. Oh, yeah. yeah. People have okay. been campaigning for uh, Billy and Mandy and Evil Concarne to uh, yeah. show up on HBO Max. I'm, I'm yeah. guessing that now that, that they've bought AT&T that bought Warner Brothers that bought Cartoon Network that maybe things will old things will get on the air again. We'll see. Hopefully. It's got maybe. a lot of it's got, it's got a lot of stuff, but yeah, it's it's uh it's missing Billy and Mandy for some reason, but it has well, a lot of other in, in general, it's kind of like missing all the in-between shows. Like it has the like the start of like Dexter's and Powerpuff, and then it has all the modern stuff, but oh, everything in between is kind of missing. Yeah. Yeah, like similar thing. Yeah, that's on that's on Netflix. I know. I, I don't know how it wound up on Netflix even. Yeah. But that's a different that's a different story for a different day. Yeah. So, um one of the things I remember Billy and Mandy was uh the random cameo of Yogi and Boo Boo. Uh oh, I yeah. kinda wanna hear about that. <laughs> uh I mean back then we were just sort of like down the, the chain of purchases, uh Cartoon Network had bought Hanna Barbera when I very first started working there. So I was like under the impression that they were just the same company. <laughs> same. <laughs> so when when I started doing episodes, I was just like, well, I want to. Th I think it'd be funny to throw in Scooby Doo, or I think it'd be funny to throw in Top Cat, and oh, I would yeah. just do it. Uh, and nobody ever said anything. And then finally, it was, I think it might have been after that episode. It was somewhere in that neighborhood. Uh, I think it was actually at the Yogi and Boo Boo. Uh, I got I got a letter or not a letter, an email from uh, somebody at the Hanna Barbera division that was like, "Yeah, please don't do this anymore." 
<laughs> can we do it? We, we have to find ourselves some amount of money. And I was like, what? Wait, what? <laughs> you had, they had to they had to find themselves. I mean, like... this is I've heard that so many times. From this is just something that happens in big, messy companies. Is uh, there's different divisions and they have to charge themselves or charge the other division for something. <laughs> like half. So ha dumb. The sad thing is, there's so many times when like you just want to get something done. And then uh, you're like, well, I'll just, you know, I'll bring it home and do it. No, 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 we'll do it. And we'll have so, so, so do it. And, blah, blah, blah. and then after all this stuff, <laughs> nothing gets done. Yeah. Oh. It, it's a, it sounds very infuriating. No more Hanna-Barbera cameos. <laughs> well, I think there's a little bit more of a process now, it feels like. Because when Ian was talking about uh, including characters for the Nexus crossover event thing with his OKKO OK show. Um, it sounded like he had to like just go upstairs and like ask for permission. Oh yeah, it's. I think it's back. You know, back then I don't think they thought anyone was gonna want to use anything from an old cartoon. <laughs> but yeah, like uh, with Happy Halloween Scooby Doo and the Scarecrow, I was worried that that was gonna be tough to get. But I just wrote an email to someone at uh, DC and I was like, hey, here's what I want to do, and here's sort of his yeah. arc throughout the the movie and. Yeah, like, yeah WB it. seems to be a lot more lenient to just letting people use whatever, because recently Teen Titans Go had Beetlejuice and Freakazoid on. Yeah, yeah uh, it's it's kind of cool. There was uh, When I was at Disney, they were always like, yeah, we want synergy, and you know, see if you can mix your stuff with somebody else's stuff. And So we would all talk about it, and then we'd bring stuff to the executives, and they'd be like, no. Nah. Oh, man. <laughs> But yeah, Warner Brothers, they seem to be down with it. Yeah, that reminds me when for Clarence, uh, they had that same issue where they were like, hey, we want to incorporate, I think, Uncle Grandpa here. And the executives were like, nah, we don't want to do a crossover unless it's a big event. And it's like, why would you not want cameos, you know? Yeah. yeah. I remember as a kid, cameos were always like the best. Like it always made me super excited to see stuff. Like I felt clever because I knew where it was from, you know? Yeah. Hey. When I remember um, your Tumblr post where you talked about the invasion event and oh, how yes. like See an it was originally just like, it was just a mac and it was a mac and oh, cheese yeah. commercial like basically craft, wasn't craft it mac and cheese uh -huh. and th and then like they lost and then the deal fell through and you guys were just kind of stuck with this crossover yeah, yeah. you just stuck didn't know with what this, to do an epic five part story about cheese <laughs> yeah <laughs> damn you can't find another cheese sponsor. I, I really liked I liked it when they did the more action oriented type or le, not action oriented per se, but they gave it like an epic sort of presentation, which the commercials did, not the special themselves. Yeah. But yeah, I think that's why I gravitated towards uh, Underfist so much. It was very action oriented, and I mm -hmm. liked that a lot. Oh yeah, if you could, like, would you rather like bring back Billy Mandy or or start Underfist? be happy doing either like they're they're the same world still to me so <laughs> under, uh, under and i i actually saw somebody in the questions earlier and i know they were joking but uh, when do we get the all-female under fist reboot you know what I'm <laughs> all over that oh yeah you got a like, yeah. mindy um yeah there's uh, there's Aris. something in there for sure yeah pa bring back pandora <laughs> oh yeah her yeah. <laughs> I don't know why she was just one of the first ones that popped in my mind for some reason. I don't even know how I remember. Yeah. Oh, how about this? Uh, were you expecting Fred to be such a big success to the point where it became kind of a channel mascot? Fred's uh, no, no, lot, I don't right? think anybody really saw that coming. Uh, I mean, we all thought he was funny and uh, everybody thought the, ep the first episode came out great. And they were like, yeah, we wouldn't mind seeing more Fred. And then... I think it was before we even got the second episode done. He was just like on billboards and stuff. Oh man! Well, all right, hey, I uh, I've been wanting the show on a billboard. If if it takes a uh, little yeah. elephant man, I'm him for it. And cheese were like <laughs> I the was actually gonna seeing mascots. I w I was actually gonna ask, following that up, like, did Cartoon Network be like, you're gonna need to make more Fred Fred Burger episodes. You're gonna you're gonna have to pop that little elephant man in everywhere. <laughs> no, I think. We were, I mean, we were so close to the end of the series at that point. Uh, by the time the frozen yogurt one came out, we were—he was probably, or we were probably already planning Big Boogie Adventure, and that was kind of the end of the road. Yeah. So there wasn't really a lot of opportunity to overuse him, thankfully. You mm -hmm. you mentioned how uh, Fred Fred Burgers uh, last like three years, so um, he's he's dead now. We'll never see oh, Fred yeah. Fred Burger again. Tragic. Yeah. <laughs> 
So yeah, I guess I can't do under fist. Yeah, yeah. short lifespan. No, they can replace some. They'll, they'll get. You Jeff know. mourns the loss of his friend. Well, uh, you know, uh, his his species. They, it's like you know, Maz. They only live a certain number of hours. And really, when we were doing the frozen yogurt episode, we had this basket of them, and they just kept dying. And we kept swapping. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> I was going to say was you could always make it where they uh, asexually reproduce. Yeah. And just a clone. They all sound the same. The ace- yeah. Fred, Fred asexually reproduces by budding. Yeah. What a morbid image. Yeah. Just Starts this. Vibrating it, and yeah, like a just this. No. Yeah, this tumor fetus like Fred Fig. Fred just, Fred Berger. Just, I almost said Fred Fagelhorn. No, I got them. Uh, just, now just, I miss making <laughs> cartoons. Oh, wow. Yeah. Just replace Fred with uh, that one SpongeBob knockoff with the flamethrower. Coconut Fred? No, remember there was like a SpongeBob character in in Billy and Mandy. Bob, was there? Mm, Hang on, no. like the the blue square guy in the underworld. Is that <laughs> yes, what you're talking about? that guy. Hang on, let me let me bust out an image. This this guy. Oh, yeah, that's, oh, uh, yeah. That's... I I blame uh, C H Greenblatt for that one. I would imagine, yeah. <laughs> We had him on a while back. Yeah. Oh, oh man. yeah. Uh, I love the grim cameo in the Scooby Doo movie. Quote, I'm doing air quotes. Close enough. Oh yeah. 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 <laughs> speaking fun. of speaking of cameos, I loved the number three one in the Big Boogie Adventure movie because it was just out of nowhere. It's synergy. Oh yeah, that's a whole story too. How we ended up there. Uh, Please. Because I I got. Uh... There were like a number of, of celebrities we were trying to get, and I don't remember. There were there were a couple of really good ones. Uh, we could have gotten Marilyn Manson, but the network said no. Oh man! And then we got everything approved for Pamela Anderson, uh, which I thought would have been hilarious. But agreed. I don't remember what the problem was. It just got into one of those things where it's just like uh, they were like, "Well, we don't know." And is anyone going to know who Pamela Anderson is if they're 14 year old 14 year old boy and i was like yeah <laughs> oh boy uh so finally it just got to the point where uh, they were like yeah okay we'll do it and then her representation was like no we've, we've moved on so uh, i was like well now i have no one like what do i do and then I was like, oh and then i'll call tom <laughs> yeah i was literally about to say tom slides in with a fucking kazoo sound effect so mm-hmm. you need some help was pamela gonna be like a cartoon or live action uh, it would have been a cartoon. Okay. Oh, right, I would have. Right, I would have. I got enough character. trouble for the puppet scene. Puppet scene? What happened in the puppet yeah, scene? Yeah, the, where they go through the uh, puppet dimension. Yeah, the just in the the big boogie adventure that brief scene with the boat. How, how did I get well, into trouble? trouble for that? Uh, well, it turned out to be a really expensive scene, and I think once they realized it was only about four seconds long. <laughs> uh, oh they, yeah, some, you had to build I got all those some puppets. side eye over that. Oh man. I feel like you have to kind of trick them in order to get what you want, though. Sometimes well, you have you know to be what? like they used those puppets for years afterwards. So. Good. They did. Oh, well. I remember seeing those like in commercials. And yeah, stuff, the the one like um, Dracula had like a uh, had those puppet commercials, so I'm sure they used them there. Mm-hmm. This reminds me of like the the CGI walnuts that were that were so expensive for Invader Zim. <laughs> Like I want to know. I remember hearing about that, but it's been a while. I, I want to know. Did you... stories of like other animation things that are like, hey, this this shot was like 10, 10 seconds, but it cost us way more than the actual episode or something. I, feel I like don't it... have any more that are exactly like that. <laughs> Dang, you didn't build <laughs> a CG model. Um, were there actually any uh, Billy and Mandy episodes like on the cutting room episode ideas that are shot down or just like you guys didn't funny or uh probably i don't really remember anything specific but like the way we would do them since they were it was like a premise based show so i would just basically write a pool of like as many episodes as i could think of for a season and i would just put them in a like this little inbox on my door and then the artist could come up and kind of read through them decide which one they wanted to do so there's probably a lot of them that just died from nobody having any interest in doing them. <laughs> oh, dang! But, uh, you know that's okay because I it turned. I think it was a good way to, you know, get get things done because people, you know, if they took a story, ideally it was something they wanted to do, and if there was something I really wanted to do that nobody was doing, I would make sure it got done. Yeah, mm-hmm. with six seasons, you managed to do a lot with that. 
Oh yeah. I mean, was there... Yeah, I was telling somebody the other day, like I'm, I'm okay with the fact that we ended at seventy six half hours. Like I, I could do more, sure, but like I was completely satisfied. Yeah. Would I mean, that, you... must, that must be that must be like a great feeling though, just to be like having accomplished everything you wanted to. Yeah, I think, I think that's that's where Underfist was sort of like if there was going to be more, like I would want it to. Like it could have the same characters, but I would want to do some sort of shift in the tone of the the whole show, I guess. W- would you yeah. want to make it for kids or for adults? Like I don't know if you've ever done any like adult shows. Um, I I wouldn't mind doing adult stuff, but uh, I think for Billy and Mandy, Billy and Mandy is always something that. Like I've I've always been happiest when kids come up and or kids and their parents come up at like Comic Con and are like, hey, we we watch the show together. Like, I don't know how many parents are weird enough to watch the show with their kids, but that was <laughs> always my goal. I think so I wouldn't want to I wouldn't want to like push often. it into pure adult territory. Yeah, all the kids who watched the show growing up are probably parents now yeah. and are like, hey, look, I'm gonna give my children quality entertainment yeah, yeah. and turn on Billy and Mandy. Hmm. Uh, my friend CR, he's a YouTuber. He asked me to ask you about fish hooks. I don't get that question. He didn't specify. He just said, "Did you ask him about fish hooks?" What about it? I think uh, no. it was a TV did... show on Disney. <laughs> didn't you work on? Didn't you work on it with Tom? I think. Uh, yeah, I was the executive the producer of that. That was like right. That's what I did right after uh, I left Cartoon Network. Actually, was went over oh. to Disney to run that thing. And that lasted yeah. about five years. <laughs> did you leave? Uh, did you leave Cartoon Network because of the CN Real stuff, like everybody else, or was it just like anti? Um, deal? No, I mean, I, I left for the same reason as everyone else, in that they basically made me leave. <laughs> oh no! Uh, oh, jeez. Along, along with everybody else, like the that was like the whole deal was uh, there was this you know big regime change where. I forget who bought who at that point, but we were getting a new sort of big boss and my bosses were like, yeah, we love our new boss and you're going to love our new boss and it's going to be great. And like things did look great at that point. Like I'd, I had under fist uh, in line to go to series and there was another thing I had in development. So I was pretty excited. And then uh, they just came in and they were like, Hey, yeah, we don't like any of what we see here. <laughs> oh man. And oh, I was like, what's going on? And then like, my my bosses like all got who said that these bosses were great they all got let go and i was like Ugh. oh no and then no. uh, and then you know Kurt, craig and gendy left and i was like man i'm not sticking around <laughs> it's okay that guys was, like, uh, it's okay guys yeah, so these bosses it, are cool I yeah I, I, you can't really take it personally at that point so it was all fine <laughs> yeah everyone it's was wild. split over it's wild to think that like upper management can just shift and then like shows can be great, they can be popular, but upper management just doesn't like it, and so it gets cut. Like it's that's a it seems dumb, you know. It like it really seems is unfair. sort of remarkable how quickly things change in the animation space. Yeah, because like, recently uh, there was the AT and T buyout. Yeah, like it's it's weird because uh, I I had uh, I took like a year off to work on Dead Meat, and then I worked on the Scooby stuff for about a year, and then this year I'm home for most. Um, what else did you have in production at Cartoon Network? Because I don't remember ever hearing anything of that sort. Is this a pizza uh, party exclusive? <laughs> uh, there was a show called Minion, and this was before Minions were a thing in uh, whatever that movie is that the I'm Zeitgeist. liking. In Illumination, <laughs> yeah. Um, and it was, it was sort of a... Uh, precursor i guess to sort of this dungeon world that i've been building for a long time now um Mm. and so i got that through through my execs and then the new ones came in and didn't look at it as far as oh man is there any like footage for some of these uh, lost things or is it just all pitch pitch stuff um i've sold like 12 shows over the years and they're all just in some vault somewhere and i have like animatics that i'm pretty sure i'm not supposed to show to anybody and all sorts of materials that i'm pretty sure i'm not supposed to show to anybody yeah. maybe someday i will like in 10 years i'll just on, have it all in mind i don't know on, on your deathbed you just hit the upload button and just <laughs> say but yeah sadly i think that's that's sort of the world of animation developing for well just any entertainment like 
Yeah. It's, and our, uh, selling something's one thing, but getting it on the air is a yeah. different adventure. The show I yeah, worked on is never going to get released. Yeah. Stop yeah. saying that, Pat. Yeah. <laughs> God, I hate you. Oh, my God. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, that, I think I vaguely remember actually reading a press thing about Minion. I don't know if it actually got to that point, or maybe I'm just oh, misremembering. I, I've seen uh, Maxwell post other uh, pitch things on it on his Tumblr. Yeah. yeah. God bless your Tumblr. It's great. Yeah. Oh, thanks. I feel like I don't do anything with it ever. Yeah, no no one uses Tumblr no more. It's it's dead. No mo. Everyone goes to Twitter and Instagram. I knew it was a bad sign when I couldn't put my Tumblr address into Facebook without it rejecting it. Oh. <laughs> well, no one uses Facebook either. Once upon a time, there was a jillionaire playboy who was blown up in a tremendous explosion. His brain survived. Stomach too! And was attached to the body of a stupid circus bear. I am that brain. My name is Hector Concarne, and I will one day rule the world! <laughs> I, I, I do. Using We're Tumblr. friends on Facebook. Yeah. Uh, I stopped using Tumblr because I'm a trans person, and that was this deemed not safe for work. Oh. For some reason. Wow. So, Thanks. Yeah. I just, Thanks, I like, Yahoo. I'm not, I'm not gonna deal with that. I'm done. Twitter, it is. Yeah. <sighs> trying to think what other things I had had to ask about. Um, hmm. I don't know. I'm, look, I'm thinking back to my video. It's like, what else did I bring up? From from back in the day? I don't know. Well, the video I made uh, recently on Halloween oh. with Billy Mandy. I thought you were talking about the one from like 10 years ago. Oh, the one we did? Nah. Yeah. <laughs> nah. Let me see. Let's go see what, what the fans have to ask. It's all the same questions of like, what a Billy Mandy revival, please? Someday. Hell, it's HBO, man. Yeah. yeah. If y'all, people always be asking the creators about stuff. Like, I feel so bad for when Craig McCracken is going to have to do another round of I Have Nothing to Do with This. CW Powerpuff Girls kicks in. Oh. But, like, oh, are they doing another Powerpuff? They're doing yeah, a they're live action live. gritty reboot by a yeah. Diablo Cody's going to direct or something. It's about wow. them and teenagers, and they, like, I don't know how I missed that one. Miss their childhood. It's know. really funny because like the internet hated it, like they responded poorly. But this podcast, we're all like, we're for it because it sounds I, I, terrible, and we're excited to watch it. I, I, I kind of want that. I'm I'm up. Me for too. It. Yeah, I'm I'm like, I, it's going to be not what people want, but I'm going to eat we, it up. It's not what we want, but it's what we deserve. <laughs> oh, man. I I can't wait for the uh, gritty live action Grim and Mandy reboot. Thank you, HBO gritty. Max. Yeah, if I woke up one day and somebody was making a gritty Billy and Mandy live action reboot and I didn't know about it, I would be so thrilled. I mean, that's that webcomic, um, Grim Tales. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah okay. Oh, yeah, Grim Tales. That? Have you ever seen it? Oh, yeah. I actually, uh, way back in the day, um, I asked that guy if he wanted to come on and do the designs for Underfist. And he was like, no, I'm happy just living here doing my comic. Oh, yeah. Aww. Cool. That's cool. Was it okay? Yeah. I don't know if you, you would know this, but for Fusion Fall, do you know if like they asked uh, him, Bleed Man, if, to uh, work on that or not, or if that was true? I think they did. Oh, I man. So. It's, it's been a long time. It's possibly it's, true. The urban, the urban legend is true. Or I'm yeah. repeating the urban legend. I don't know. No. The, moral of the, the urban legend enough. could possibly be true. It's somewhat possibly kind of confirmed, maybe or I'm not. I'm going to confirm it. I'm just going to go ahead and confirm it. Fuck. Well, that settles that. The moral of uh, that story is that if you uh, draw anime fan art of Cartoon Network shows, you might work on something. Oh, uh, yeah. Crazy what kind of world we live in. Yeah. But, um... Oh, the video speaking, game. Spe speaking of, actually, I want to know your thoughts on Fusion Fall. Like, more specifically, like, I'm sh assuming you weren't, like, told and you just kind of figured it out along with everybody else. Or... That, that it was happening? Yeah, like... Yeah, all of a like, sudden you uh, just it, it came out like right after we did the playstation or whatever the the console game oh yeah the game um so when people were talking about billy and mandy game or billy and mandy being in a game i was like well yeah 
<laughs> and then like after a couple months, I was like, oh, this is a different thing. And yeah, it was like, it was weird because just kind of nobody was told anybody about it. And I think I learned about it from Richard Horvitz. Like, I think we were at a session and he was like, hey, did you know they're making a, a game with Billy and Mandy in it? No. <laughs> the designs came out pretty good for Billy and Mandy. Like everyone except for the Eds. The Eds do not translate to the style, but yeah, they translate well here. But who do you play as in the uh, Billy and Mandy video game? It's the standalone game. Me. Who do you main? Main, yes. <laughs> I don't know. It's been so long. I wish I actually wanted to play it again fairly recently, but I don't think there's a way you to should, do it. You should sense. emulate it and stream it. Everybody would eat that shit oh, like right up. Yeah, just, just I think I would probably suck, but I would do it. Just... We, I, there's actually a, a software called Parsec where you can uh, set it up. And if you need help with it, I can also get somebody or figure something out. But, like, you can stream it and play with other people. So if you wanted to get, like, your friends together and just, like, do, like, a night with that, it'd be a really good... It'd be really fun. Oh, God. Yeah. That, that, that blue. Is, I... <laughs> it, Where, is that from the game? Yes. This, this is wow. all from the game. Yeah. Oh, wow. Ooh. Yeah, I, dip, I either dipped in and played once or watched somebody play. I don't... I don't remember much about it. Yeah, some characters look better than others. <laughs> <laughs> oh god! I sent an image of, with... of the of Ed from Ed and Eddie. <laughs> These... Wait, wasn't Je wasn't Jeff in the game? Hmm. Let me see. I think so? Yes, he yeah, was. The, did they? He looks pretty much the same. Yeah. Let me copy image address. Yeah, um... but like, wouldn't wouldn't you have recorded for that? Oops. Or are there voices in it? I, I, yeah, they I um when you recorded anything for Jeff for that. So if there if there's audio, then it's from something. I, I love Jeff so much. You did yeah. such a great job voicing him, and you know just making him in general. Yeah, he was going to actually be in uh, the Billy and Mandy fighting game, but he was sort of cut at the last second because he's got a weird body. Yeah, yeah, the, the rigs. I, yeah, the rig probably would have been miserable to work with and his move set. Yeah. But I I would have loved it. Oh, you would have been great. Like it's just a unique. I like when fighting games have unique body types. Yeah, I mean, the... I remember. I, I remember in the first Kingdom Heart. <laughs> yeah. I'll... Oh, what? Jeff is Jeff is such a great character. I love him. But like, I was gonna say, I remember in the Kingdom Hearts they wanted the Lion King world, but like making Simba Sora move with in a lion body was too difficult. It's it's just so weird how video games work. It's they did do a. Lion King world, though. In the second one. Yeah. But well, in the first one, they couldn't figure out how to do it. It's surprising how well the Billy and Mandy game turned out, because there is a lot of fan service in that game. Yeah, I, uh, everybody that worked on that game was great. Like, uh, it was really collaborative, and they, uh, like, we had a big, we had a day where we all just kind of sat around and shot ideas around, and yeah, it was very cool. Was there any other cut content from that game, like uh, characters that were considered? Because I really want Billy's mom to be in it, because I thought that would have been really funny, just <laughs> oh, to have yeah. her screaming and beating the shit out of her son. Is Mogar in there? Yes, is, yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Billy's dad is in it. Yeah, I think I think we talked. We at least talked about his mom being in there. I feel like there's a couple that didn't make it in that we talked yeah. about. Is hmm. Eris in there? Um, yes. She, yeah, she has a goth outfit. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah okay. of course, yeah, she, of course. She made it. Somebody didn't make it. I don't remember who. Yeah, and then there's like these other like generic characters, like random uh, Nurgle minions playable and stuff. I don't know what that's about. I think I think they were just um, they were like secret cheat codes you had to put in. Oh yeah, and then yeah. You yeah. Mark them. Any particular reason, or was it just hey they're here? Uh, the the Nurglings, the little guys. Yeah. Uh, they were in that one episode, or one or two episodes in the, the early seasons, and I, I think they were just, like, looking for sort of throwaway enemies to fight between yeah. the big guys. They were also playable, though, weren't they? Like, Yeah, but I think I think that was sort of just, like, an unlock. Yeah. They Like, they made the model, so they may as well throw it in, sort of thing. <laughs> Crap, I'm trying to remember what else I had from that game. <laughs> Shut up, Nolan. I'm surprised they allow cross earrings, like... Is most, it across? They yeah. wouldn't do that today. I'm surprised we got away with that too. Because I remember Billy yeah. um, X Men Evolution didn't do crosses on a I forget a Scarlet Witch's ears. It was like those Egyptian cross looking things with the hoop. You uh -huh. know. Yeah, we we actually had a 
door in Happy Halloween Scooby Doo in the cemetery that it was just a door, but it looked like a cross, so we had to take that off. <laughs> oh wow! Yeah. Also, what you're describing, Pan, is called an onk. An onk. Okay. Onk. Yeah. But yeah, religious symbolism, like being so pit touchy, is so weird to me. It's like it's such a cross. Get over it. Yeah. Well, one, one thing I mean, that uh, I there's when oh. you stack like on standards and and uh, like all the legal stuff like sometimes for the whole like globe it just gets so insane <laughs> oh yeah oh oh yeah they had to change uh on grungle stan's hat in uh gravity falls because of stuff like that i think they just removed the star piece or whatever he had on him hang on grungle. no because in um disney plus um the the uh masters they used didn't have a symbol at all weird like it was just okay. not there i guess it's on a different layer and they could just take it out I mean, yeah, it's no. not that hard to just make something red. Yeah, that too. But, but for um, every shot, that's, yeah. that's ridiculous. That's that's like, oh, you got to do all of this. Well, welcome to standards and practices and a localization. Damn. Oh, Damn. oh yeah. Did how did you um ever have to change Billy and Mandy like culturally or like like certain things just um had to be changed for certain countries that you know of? Uh, toward the end, we would get a lot of notes about aerosol cans, just like don't show aerosol cans because uh, Aer Europe, I guess, was having a thing where they were trying to not use aerosol cans, which included not showing aerosol cans. <laughs> okay, um, so specific. But not, not really any. Like we did have, uh, like Billy's nose was always not always an issue, but it was an issue at the beginning, like uh, where I, there were a couple of executives who I think didn't like his nose, how big it was. So they kept trying to make me shrink his nose. And there was like a nose uh, focus group they had where I did like 16 different nose sizes. Oh and people ended up choosing a nose that was like three sizes smaller than the nose I wanted. So they made me redesign Billy with a smaller nose and it just made me all sad. And then when we sent off the models for the first episodes, uh, I just switched it out with the old one. <laughs> <laughs> and no, nobody ever brought it up again, which was weird. Good. Uh, one, no, one point no. like... Uh, he can keep the big nose, but just don't make him Jewish. And I was like, fine. What? We, did not, we didn't make him Jewish until the until the Christmas special. <laughs> oh, wait, wait. That reminds me, like, uh, the gravestones in the intro. Like, uh, uh, there's uh, Robot Jones there, and he has a Jewish star, uh, Star of David. Uh, is he Jewish? Uh, no, that was just uh, the background painter just painted the, the headstones, and I just threw the names on there. I don't. There's Dang. no correlation. Dang. Anything. <laughs> you you had every opportunity to have Robot Jones be Jewish and you yes. take it. Ask Greg Miller. Maybe this, maybe that was a thing I've forgotten about. <laughs> the second Jewish robot next to Optimus Prime. Yes. <laughs> that that's crazy though that you had a straight up like nose focus test. Yeah, it's in the DVD bonus features. Uh, yeah. Oh, we also I, did. I guess we had. Uh, of course, Greg Eagles plays uh, Grimm, and when uh, the, the episode where Grimm gets sick and becomes alive, uh, I wanted to have the character look like Greg Eagles, and they actually talked me out of that, and rightfully so, I think, uh, by explaining that then you would have two kids that owned a living black man. Uh, <laughs> oh, oh, no! I didn't even think what? about that, because I've yeah, seen I didn't either, like... Uh, but yeah, every now and then it's good to have somebody there to catch you. Something <laughs> oh, no! God. Oh, that... that that's, oh, no! That, uh... <laughs> yeah, that's... It, blowing I mean, I can... <laughs> I can I can see your logic though, like you're not really thinking about it. And you're like, oh well, Greg Eagles voices, so it should be Greg Eagles. Like, yeah, I want to give Greg a, give, give Greg some props. Oh. And, and no, and, the, and the, I can picture somebody just tapping on your shoulder and like whispering in your ear inaudibly, and you're like, oh, oh boy, <laughs> no, that, that's wild. Like, because I've always seen like YouTubers talk about it, and they're always like, why is the he's clearly Jamaican? Why did you not make him? A... And it's like, oh, yeah. That's a good it point. It all makes sense now. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Oh. Not awesome. You know, the dodge the bullet there, but oh. Yeah. Great story. Speaking of dodging bullets, there is an ass load of Matrix references in Billy and Mandy. Like, I was watching it. It's like 
every other episode. I, I gotta make That's a compilation. A segue, by the way, Pan. That was like the most clever segue you've ever done. Look, I love the Matrix and the just like it, it just like why is there so many Matrix references in this show? Where are the Matrix references? I, I'm, really I'll make a, I will make a compilation and I'm gonna send Do that it. shit to you. Because <laughs> there's so many well, bullet time effects and there's like. In the Secret Snake Club, they're booting up the computer, and it said, activating Matrix. Matrix. Sequel's not so good, and all these other okay, things. Okay, yeah, I do remember that. <laughs> yeah. Did you know Billy and Mandy started as a web cartoon? Plot twist. It's not true. We lied. Yeah. Plot untwisted. Are you no. doing a bit right now? Th that's Are what you... the computer said. Oh, okay. I was like... This is weird. It didn't start out as a web cartoon. It, was, it started out as that creepy film reel that Maxwell found in, like, an attic or something. <laughs> All corroded. Yeah. So Cool. I, I dug out of Benjamin Franklin's grave. Yeah. <laughs> Just like, God. What other, anyone else got any other questions or things to say? I got one. What? Um, is there any questions you're tired of answering? <laughs> no i guess not i mean it's like it's, here's your uh, chance i feel like, like enough time goes by between when people ask me questions now that i forget what most of the answers are yeah you i'm you just you um not to like project but it seems like you're a very when it comes like to like you're cutting out yeah. nolan that's God. really not you're not projecting at all <laughs> oh is that, is that just accurate <laughs> No, you, did... you cut out. We couldn't hear oh. what you were saying. Shit, I don't. I didn't mean to project. I was just saying, like, are you the person to be like in now? And when somebody asks you about something, you're oh, like, no. <laughs> yeah, you cut out again. Mother type fucker. Just type it. I'll read I'll it. I'll type it. <laughs> I'm gonna just. He's typing. He's typing. Nolan B. Typing. Are you oh. the type of person oh. to be in the now, and just like, years in the future? <laughs> In the now, and then just like, you're like, you're like wait, wait, that happened. Now. Like I, as though I've been cryogenically frozen. No more. Can you guys hear me now? Can you hear yeah. me now? I w I more so just meant like you're so in the now that you just like are focused on what you're currently doing, and then years later you just kind of don't remember it because you were, you're focused on the thing currently. You know what I mean? Oh no, I, I have a pretty good memory actually. <laughs> oh okay. Um. <laughs> I think I actually I I sort of well, have a problem being in the now traditionally. I'm mostly in the future. Dang, must that's, be scary. That's deep. Uh, uh, <laughs> do you know what you're gonna weird. do next? No, that's been the weird thing about this year. Is this year really shook it up? Now I don't know what's going on. Make I used a, to have make... like a five year plan, and now I got no plan. Oh. What's um, what's a series you would love to be asked to work on, similar to like Scooby Doo? Ah, uh, well, I, w I would love to work on Scooby-Doo, but <laughs> um, that's a good question. Like an animated series, I assume? In general. Um, like a, I, think, I, I think like, like an, an intellectual cool. property. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I've I think I've been kind of turning around on that stuff recently just because like I've, I've been so focused on getting something new made. Mm -hmm. And now I'm just like, well there are intellectual properties I like. <laughs> so I think Scooby kind of opened me up to that. But yeah, beyond that, I don't know. Okay. Hmm. The more you know. Powerpuff Girls? Live action Powerpuff Girls? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Somebody hit, somebody hit up CW. Yeah. Yeah, get Diablo Cody on the line. I mean, I, I would do that. <laughs> <laughs> I love you. You don't want a live action Billy and Mandy? <laughs> There's there've been a couple of things that are like animated properties that I've been asked to like run reboots of mm -hmm. that I just feel are like it's too close to me. <laughs> oh, can yeah. you can you, know you know list I mean? any of can you list any actually, of the ones? But, uh, okay. But that's sort of been the the problem lately. I'm like, well, if I'm going to do that, I'll just do a Billy and Mandy reboot. <laughs> Cartoon Network. But yeah, I mean, <laughs> if you're going to like something's extreme as like live action Powerpuff Girls, yeah, I'd be all over. <laughs> yes. 
Yeah, and now, now I kind of want you to work on it. Damn. Yeah, <laughs> yeah let's uh, let's start a hashtag on Twitter. <laughs> just just get Hit Girl from Kick Ass and just duplicate that by three. You know, just all the violence. Put it all in there. No, no, don't pollute his thoughts. I want to know what his like pure pure, pure distilled action. Maxwell Adams live action Powerpuff Girls. It's just a bunch of jack o' lanterns again. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> Yeah. And puppets. Eris or a knockoff of Eris shows up. He he's creative. He doesn't have to like just knock off his own stuff. Why are you Look, Pan, why are you so derivative? Because it's like yeah. come on. It's like, hey, there was an Eris knockoff in Billy and Mandy, so and now you got to do Scooby Doo and there's the real Eris. Okay, so I mean, here's a generic question you oh, probably man. get a lot. It's like, what's some what's uh, encouraging advice you can give to young people that want to start getting into the animation industry? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, it's one of those uh, things. Throwing it for the young and encouraging advice. I mean, honestly, like animation is bigger than ever. Like, uh, there's so much animation. Like, everything's animation now. Half the Mandalorian's animation. Like. There's a ton of animation jobs. Um, I think the challenge is just sort of getting, you know, the, the job you want in the place you want. Um, Your foot in the door. Yeah. But, uh, I mean, it's it's a very cool job. It's uh, I get to, you know, tell stories for a living, which is what I've always wanted to do. So I, I can't complain. Yeah. Uh, every now and then it's, uh, it's worth chasing the dream <laughs> i refer to it as a sexy job because whenever i tell people i animate it's always like a ooh ah what have you done and it's just like okay calm down <laughs> <laughs> jesus but it's one of those things yeah i like, used to get that from my parents it. too i think that dried up eventually but <laughs> we're so proud of you max you work on the mickey mouse shows and you're like yeah i do that mickey mouse making those motion pictures <laughs> I do indeed make Wait. pictures move. Thanks, Mom. And Dad. <laughs> yeah. So. Oh, uh, this is a really random question, but how did you did you watch the um, the uh, crap? What's it called? It's a it's a horror reboot of of a kids' cart TV show. The live action people. Uh, Are you banana. Thinking? The oh uh, the banana, banana splits. splits. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. I did yeah. not actually. Uh, oh. I wanted to watch that because it does seem like it's in the the dead meat space like mm -hmm. i wanted to see how how it fared if it looked like it had any production value or i don't know have you guys seen it or oh i, I have. have yeah recently. it's a pretty yeah. decent movie like it feels like they put genuine effort into it isn't because like oh, a lot of people are not looking forward to it but it's like hey it's hanna barbera they they always well the hanna barbera brand they always experiment with these things like with space ghost and sea lab right yeah the one of the producers on that uh works at weren't well everybody works at Warner brothers i guess but uh I talked to him about uh, the puppets for Dead Meat like seven years ago or something. And he was huh. like, oh, you're doing a puppet movie? And I was like, yeah. And he's like, don't do it, man. Just don't do it. <laughs> oh, and man. I think about that a lot now. <laughs> Damn. Like, were, were you just wrote it down. Were, were you discouraged when you saw that uh, Happy Time Murders movie come out? I mean, yeah. Like, the thing is, the as, as time went on, just like there were sort of these milestones. And the first one was, uh, or at least felt like uh, Fury Road. Because I was when i started like there was no fury road and i was just like it's been a decade since anybody's made like a post-apocalyptic action movie and then we got fury road and then we got uh, happy time murders and then we got banana you know splits. banana splits we got uh donald trump and a pandemic and people hoarding toilet paper and pretty soon it's just like everything that was in my script has like come true i oh, know it was oh, a prophecy yeah. you predict so... <laughs> you're a fucking prophet oh, damn my God. it's like knowing by nicholas well, cage i mean I, the I witch. Think, yeah i've always been kind of good with the zeitgeist and it's just like everything takes so long to make it's even with seven years to prepare it's like i didn't make it <laughs> oh you're like but, you're uh... like it's like Hideo Kojima predicting, like, the current landscape of the internet in 2002. Or Perfect Blue. Yeah, or uh, I've been reading a lot of William Gibson. That guy's on top of shit. Orson Welles. <laughs> but uh, I think you would enjoy the Banana Splits. It's a, it's a good time. It's uh, yeah. If you can find it pretty cheap on streaming, I recommend it. Like, All right, yeah. Yeah. Thank yeah. you for reminding me. And if you hate you it, just tweet at me, like, you motherfucker. <laughs> 
<laughs> I'll, I'll talk to people I know that worked on it first. <laughs> <laughs> now that I uh, now now that you guys talked about banana splits, I would love to see Max work on a Five Nights at Freddy's cartoon or something. Well, that would be Max fun. Do you want to work on yeah. a Five Nights at Freddy's? Do you want to work on a Five Nights at Freddy's cartoon, Max? You know, from what I, I it could be beyond this now, but I feel like Five Nights at Freddy's is sort of this sweet spot where everybody knows what it is, but there's really no story or personality or anything else going on with the characters. So that's kind of a cool. Like it's wide open. <laughs> well, yeah, game theory disagrees. They just did another <laughs> fucking uh, final theory. The fi of the final one again for yeah, the last the time until modes. the next. Yeah. Yeah. The ninth night at Freddy's. <laughs> yeah. Five nights at Freddy's. The tenth night. But is this all? Because I don't know. I think we asked every possible question we could. Yeah. Do you have any you have questions time? for us, us, Max? Would no. you like to ask us anything? Yeah, what are you doing with the rest of your weekend? Um, um web pray I don't work, edit videos, uh, work on a webcomic. Uh, what are you using to edit with? Uh, Premiere Pro. Ooh, nice Pro. Yeah. <laughs> like, a, like a Pro, yeah. Adobe double charge me, those <laughs> bastards. Oh, do you have the the full Creative Suite? Yeah, I gotta have Photoshop and uh, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and. Uh, Premiere and Illustrator, but I don't use Illustrator no more. Unless I, I feel like out. everybody only uses three, but you gotta have them all. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's, I think it's, I use After Effects, Flash, and uh, Photoshop. Premiere. I use four. I think it's an all or nothing with with uh, Adobe, so it's like, you better buy all of them or else. I kind of want to draw Jeff uh, wrapping somebody up now, because no. I just missed that boy. No. What? Oh, it's okay. been so know... long since I drew Jeff that I forgot that he only has two body segments. <laughs> <laughs> forgot to draw well, your OCs. Now, now there's an opportunity to draw him again. Woo! Woo -woo. So is this the end? Yeah, I'm running out of stuff to ask besides yeah. like weird movie questions. Like, have you seen Trick or Treat? Because I'm obsessed with that movie right now. Yeah, it's good though, right? Yeah. Oh, oh, I saw it for the Maybe first time. Maybe we need time. to have a separate podcast where we just talk about movies. Please. I would love that. Okay, so like Trick or Treat, I saw it for the first time this Halloween. And it's the first time I felt joy in like months. <laughs> and now I have bought like a crap ton of the Sam figurines. And I just got, I just read the comic. <laughs> There's like a Imagine. sequel too, right? I, I didn't there see is. it. But... What? The sequel's in the comic. Like, I just read it. It acts, uh, half the comic's a retelling of the first movie, and then the other half is, like, four stories that have a bookend together. So, I just clicked the book there, because I was flipping through the pages. Hmm. I'm actually drawing Sam right now. Let me, uh, let me show you a little picture. Show us. And then... <laughs> I don't know what... Uh, forgive me i draw in flash and everything because my day job i do flash so i just got really used to just like yeah drawing everything in it even though it's an inferior drawing program you heard of your mama on youtube That's... oh god don't talk about your mama it's my job oh uh, i you animate talk about your job really. yeah i animate your mama jokes for a living <laughs> all right <laughs> what's your favorite your mama joke yeah uh, what is it is he uh out of that series the one are you writing slimer, the jokes wrote, as well uh i write dialogue occasionally like uh my favorite line i've ever wrote was slimer you know ecto cool it <laughs> that's not a yo mama joke that's... it's not i said i wrote the script skits afterwards i don't they, they, my, my boss like writes the jokes and it kind of just seems like he just randomly throws general phrases together half the time they don't make sense like yo mama's so short her mobile phone, her mobile home was a mobile phone. Like n that doesn't make any sense. It's I hated it. It's a, it's a thinker, you know. You gotta like <laughs> take a second. It's like it makes it just rhymes. That doesn't make a joke. It, it's because it's so big. The the mobile mobile home is like a phone sized object. So she can't, She holds the phone. <laughs> she holds like a phone. But, uh, maybe there's like actually... a little, an actual phone inside. Of the mobile home, so Can should we I... like make a call? Stop Can. it! <laughs> Stop. Uh, but if I can promote something to you, Maxwell, I worked on a pilot that our friends of the show uh, oh, yeah. made Long, called Long Gone Gulch. 
Yeah. I don't know if you've seen it or heard of it, but um, there's the trailer for it. I did some cleanup animation for it. Oh, no, I've, I've known about this for a long time, but I didn't know it was done. Yeah. It's, it's not, about well, to, it, it's, it's on its way to being completed. It should be ready by the end of this year or early next year. Yeah. Oh, cool. Yeah, I think it's uh, all the animations done. I think they're just doing compositing and sound design. So, yeah, they're they're finishing up the editing part. But Post production like, shit. Support my friends. <laughs> like, there you go. All right. Yeah, thank Long you. Long gone gulch. Yeah. Sorry yeah. to be like that person. It's like, here's the things I work on cuz that's tacky. Yeah. Well, I did ask. That's okay, fair. Maxwell sealed his fate. Yeah? Yeah. Did he now? Yeah. I guess Thank I you damn. so much for coming on, by the way. This was really yeah. enjoyable. You were a delight, delight to talk to. You know, it's it's been a super, super busy month, super busy week, but I cleared out some time today for you guys. Thanks. Thank you so much. Mm-hmm. I yeah. appreciate it. Yeah, without All right. this, I would have been uh, taking a nap with the dog growing tomatoes who knows growing your uh what were the tomatoes called bring a full circle the uh um master Britney tomatoes Spears. yeah Britney spears tomatoes on that note uh yeah. thank you again for coming on and to all the viewers out there um stay in school don't do drugs and ask HBO Max to give Maxwell Adams the keys to the Powerpuff Girls reboot. Yes. And also Billy and Mandy. Please. We should have came up with a clever hashtag. Nah. Um, Coming for that. Hashtag clever hashtag. Hashtag clever hashtag. There you go. Yeah. Got it. I'm doing it right we now. Do Billy and Mandy and we have cell phones. Yeah. <laughs> that'll change everything. Yes. Yes. Because then they can be like, hey, the Grim Reaper's with us. Selfie. Pog, pog face. Ha-ha. <laughs> I'm oh, excited God. to do this stupid hashtag Mandy. joke that no one's gonna get for like a week. Mandy, that what? is so partners. God, what are you doing? man, calm down. It, 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 it. Listen, pog, pog, pog is like a hit meme now with the kids. Yeah. The network is gonna ask to put that in. Pogs are coming back because it's the '90s. It's in pog form. Billy and Mandy is back in pog form. Man- Mandy swoops up from the darkness, says "poggers," and then disappears, or she turns into a pog. Amazing. Yes. All right. Well, we really appreciate you. Let's respect this time. Yeah. <laughs> right. I love you guys. Uh, yeah. We'll do it again in uh, you know seven or eight years. Ten years. Yeah. Sounds good. The ten oh, yeah. year blood. The ten year blood pact has been made. The ritual. <laughs> Yep. Goodbye, everybody. Uh, There's another horror movie, The Ritual. Yes. Okay. Okay. Bye. Bye. <laughs> thank you so much. Yeah, thank you again, Maxwell. This was a lot of fun. Yeah. yeah. Now I'm just trying to figure out how to hang up. Oh, uh, <laughs> um, uh, There's a phone with an X on it. Click that button.